No. 
Good morning, saints. Good morning, saints. Welcome. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. Don't let the sun shine. Keep you away. It's only two hours. You can go out and grill. Welcome in the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord brings freedom. The presence of the Lord brings joy. The presence of the Lord comforts you. The presence of the Lord is peace. I mean, whatever God is, of course, that is his presence. His presence brings everything. His presence suits you. He's a, he's a shade when you're in the heat. And he is the sun when you are in the cold. So whatever you need, his presence fulfills it for you. So you should always be joyful. I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. It's a joyful thing. It's a beautiful thing to be in God's presence. All right. Let's carry on with our proclamation of the day. Let's speak to the north, to the south, to the east and the west that Jesus is Lord and there is no other God. You can search, you can look, you can dig, you can climb. When you finish, come back and tell me if you found another God. I can tell you already there's none other. But you are free to, you are free to go and search, okay? All right. Isaiah 55. I'll read verses 6 to 9. Isaiah 55, verse 6 to 9. And it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. That means there are times that you may cry. And, you know, you remember the story of the, the ten virgins. Five were ready, five were not. The, the five that were ready got in with the bridegroom. The five that were not ready, they knocked. And the Lord said, sorry, I don't know you. So there is a time. Don't waste your time. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. Leave those worldly things that you are that you think you are enjoying. They are not doing you any good. Seek the Lord while he may be found, while you still have breath, in, in, you know, while you are still breathing through your nose and you can still talk and you can still think. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return. That means you've been away from God. He says, come back. I love you. I want you. It to be well with you. My plans for you are good and not evil. To give you a hope and a future. So return. Wherever you've been, come back. And he will have mercy on you. He will have mercy. And return to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. Everything about God is abundant. He's abundant in love, abundant in, in, in peace, abundant in grace, abundant in forgiveness, abundant in blessings. Everything. He is so mighty, so big. And that's how he is. So you want his abundant pardon. You don't want his abundant wrath. Okay? Your mother didn't, didn't raise up a dummy. So think now. Verse 8, Isaiah 55. God is saying, don't think that what you are doing is that that's all there is to it. He's telling you and I, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. What you think is right. <laughs> you are, that's you as a human being. Have you asked me what I think about it? My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. Says the Lord, not says Victoria. Read it for yourself. These days we have the Bible. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Don't compare yourself with God. 
Don't even think that you are close to, to, to the where he is. Find him, seek him, and he will keep revealing himself to you. In all eternity, we will still be finding out about this God. That is how abundant he is. As the heavens are higher, higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, that's what we want to read for today. And that's what I want us to pray into. Father, show me your ways. Father, reveal your thoughts to me. That's why we have the spirit of prophecy. That's why we have visions. That's why we have dreams. Ask, return to him, and he will show you what he thinks about you, about your situation, about the world at large, everything. He has the answers. He has the keys. You, you and I don't. That's why we seek him. Let us pray. Most wonderful and everlasting Father, Father, we give you the praise. We thank you. We honor you. We worship you. Thank you that you don't treat us as we deserve. Thank you that even when we sin, you give us the opportunity to return to you so that you can abundantly pardon. Right now, Father, we confess our sins, known and unknown, because our minds are feeble. We, sometimes we, the things we enjoy are, are the actual things we should not be doing. So we ask, in your wisdom, in your love, Father, pardon our iniquities. Forgive our sins, Lord. We invoke the precious blood of Jesus right now to wash us. We cleanse ourselves. We cleanse our thoughts. We step under the shower of the blood of Jesus. We soak ourselves in the bathtub. We just want to be clean. Because you say, even though our sins are as red as crimson, you will make us as white as snow. We receive pardon right now. We receive your love right now. We thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, because you are taking us into the presence of the Lord. Thank you that you know our hearts. Thank you that you are in control of the situation. And we agree with you. We surrender our wills to you right now. And we say, just have your way. Take us in. We want to dine with the Father. We want to have a sweet communion with the Father. Thank you for your angelic assistance that you release on our behalf. We push back every form of opposition right now and we say, Lord, be magnified in our presence. Be magnified in our praises. Be magnified in our hearts, be magnified in our lives. Have your way in the ministry of the living Jesus and in the lives of all those who call this church their home church, their family church. Lord, I bless your people in your name. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Let's go into the message of today. The reading will be from Galatians chapter 5. Let's go right in. Galatians 5, verse 16 to verse 26. 16 to 26. Galatians 5. So Paul is writing to the Galatians. From verse 16. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, 
you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. So the, the list goes on and on, and the like. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 22, Galatians 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Against this beautiful fruit, there's no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. May the Lord bless His word and may He soften our hearts so that we will be able to receive the benefit of today's word into our lives so that our lives will be better and the lives of the people around us will be better for the glory of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He died for all, so we must live for him. All right. As we can see, the title is Led by the Spirit. We must be led by the Spirit of God. We must allow the Spirit of God to lead us. Otherwise, like we said, we don't know what we are doing because God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are different from ours. So you don't want to do what you think you know to do. You need to listen to God and hear what he says that you need to do. All right. I used to say this at the beginning, and you know, sometimes I take for granted that people listen and they do what they are told, but I'm reminding you again today. When we come into the presence of God, we must know that we are coming to receive, so we will be blessed, okay? However, the blessing that we receive is not just for us. You are not a reservoir. You are supposed to be a pipe. Okay? So, you receive to be blessed and you receive to be a blessing. All right? So, in this case, we are coming to be equipped to enlighten. I said that last week. That is... if. If you go on the website or, or Facebook, you will see on the logo, it says, Equipped to Enlighten, Sharing the Love of Christ Jesus. That's what this ministry is about. So, if you are coming to be equipped so that you can enlighten, what does that mean? Pick up your notebooks and your pen. If you just listen to me, you will forget it in a blink of an eye because the enemy doesn't want you to receive and, and take that blessing and go and bless other people. Write it down so that it will stick. Okay? That's the whole point. Don't just come to be fed, but come prepared for a takeaway. You, you are fed. And then you take away. Okay? 
the takeaway boxes are ready. That's your notebook and your pen. Get fed and take something away for others, okay? Even for later in your life. You are blessed to be a blessing. You are not blessed to just keep it to yourself. That, that's called selfishness. You are not supposed to selfish here. You are supposed to give fish out. <laughs> All right, you get the point. Let's carry on. It's a beautiful Sunday. We are being led by the Spirit of God Almighty. So, if we have chosen to belong in this family of God, then we must also allow him, allow him to lead us. He is daddy, you are the baby. Don't see yourself as a grown-up or, you know, adult or, you know, somebody who knows. You must always be a baby with God. Let the little ones come to me. That's, those are the ones, the, the heart of a child. So allow your daddy to lead you. Because Jesus himself said, I will not leave you as orphans. Why? Because you are his child. Even if the whole world forsake you, Jesus will never forsake you. That's, that's what, let, let's look at that quickly. Today I have a lot of Bible passage. Talk about note, notebook and pen. You have a lot to write today. John chapter 14 verse 18. You need to eat and take away. Eat and take away. John chapter 14 verse 18 says, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. So Jesus was preparing the heart of his disciples then because he was telling them, I will die three days I will, you know, come back. But of course, he didn't come to live on the earth. So he knew he had to go. So the point here is that we have to choose. Jesus is not saying that he will force himself on you because he died for you and paid the price of your sin. No, he's still giving you the choice. The choice is mine and the choice is yours. So if we have chosen to belong to this family of God, then allow daddy to lead you, okay? The spirit of the father, the spirit of the son is the same spirit. And that's why we just read in um, Isaiah 55 that his ways and his thoughts are different. Let him lead you. You don't know, you don't know where he's going. You don't know where your life will be in in two weeks. You don't even know what is going to happen in two weeks. So let him lead. And the same John chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandment. That means just, just allow me to, to do it. You just, if you love me, you know, you are in my family. I died for you. I paid the price. It's still your choice to follow me or not. So if you choose to follow me and you say, Jesus, I love you. I want to follow you. And he says, keep my commandments. Okay. Once we choose. Once we choose, then he will lead. Once we agree with him, then he will lead. So we just need to agree. And obey because like the song goes, there's no other way. Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. If, you're, if you do your own thing, you will, you will only struggle. Those are the people who say, oh, this Christianity thing. It's because you are just doing your thing. You're not following Jesus. Jesus always says, follow me. So if you love him, that means you trust him. Then just follow him. It might be a bumpy ride sometimes, but it's, you will laugh and laugh and laugh. It's always a beautiful ride. I don't care how bumpy it is. So Jesus is saying, I have given you my word once and for all. I've done it for you once and for all. 
in good times, in bad times, my word is the same for you. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. If you love me, just just believe that and follow me. Your circumstance may change, but the word of God doesn't change according to your circumstance. So don't, don't treat God according to your circumstance. Remember, re- always remember, his word goes out. Even in that Isaiah 55, if you read it, when his word goes out, it doesn't come back to him void. It must accomplish. So it doesn't matter how the journey goes. That word must accomplish. So don't ever treat God according to how you feel or according to the circumstances that you are going through. He has done it once. He has said it once. And that's how it is. We live in a fallen and broken world. Okay? But Jesus is not fallen and broken. He is the eternal rock of ages. I'll say that again. We live in a fallen and broken world. That's why everything seems to be falling and breaking around you. But that doesn't make the word of God broken. It doesn't fall to the ground and does not accomplish. I need us to get this and focus. Be led by the spirit, not by your thoughts, not by your circumstance. Allow God to lead you. The word of God stands firm forever. And on it, when you stand on this eternal rock of ages that doesn't fall and break, that's where you receive strength. That's where you receive comfort. That's where you receive joy. That's when your life is full of love and, and peace and wisdom and, and, and prosperity. Prosperity in everything. I know when you say prosperity, people quickly just think of money. No, it's not just money. It's everything. You prosper in whatever you do. Whatever you lay your hands on will prosper. It will bear fruit. It will, it will yield good results. Okay, so stand on the solid rock. The word of God is a solid rock. It's a strong tower. Um, Let me quickly take us to Deuteronomy 31. Deuteronomy 31, just to let you see it for yourself. Verse 6 and 8, 6 and Eight, not six to eight. Deuteronomy thirty one. Verse six says, So God is giving you a word of comfort now, a word you can stand on. Be strong and of good courage, and be courageous. Be strong and be courageous. Do not fear, <laughs> don't even let the, the, the shadow of the valley of, of, of darkness bother you. When, you. when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, don't let it bother you. That's the circumstance. Don't remove your focus. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Be strong and of good, good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God He is the one who goes with you. He is with you all the time. He will not leave you nor forsake you. He goes with you. He is with you all the time. He won't leave you. He will not forsake you. Verse 8 says the same. And when God repeats himself, you better listen a hundred times. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. So if he's in front of you, then look at him. Don't look at around and start panicking. Let him lead. Be led by the Spirit of God. So in any circumstance, through any circumstance, 
he goes before you to focus on him. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He's in front of you and he's right there with you. He's all over. He's behind because he's the ever-present God, Jehovah Shammah, always there in any situation. You are seeing the situation, but he's not <laughs> because his word is like, you are a conqueror. You are victorious. Because I have overcome, you have overcome. He is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. Don't be dismayed. Let him lead you. Be led by the Spirit. The same thing you will see in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. So, old and new, same, same story. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself had, has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So the writer of the Hebrew epistle is reminding you of what God said <laughs> thousands of years before. He hasn't changed. So he won't change because we are going through COVID in, the 20, in, in, in 2021. Okay? So don't allow what you are going through, your circumstance, make you, uh, or make, make you fearful or discourage you. Do not be discouraged. He is right here with you. Take comfort in his word. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. As a matter of fact, I've gone ahead of you. I've sorted the situation. Read the stories of, of the Jewish people. All those years when they were fighting one nation after another. He goes and finishes the, the job and says, okay, now David, go. Simple as that. So you need to trust. But you need to ask first. David never went into any war before without asking God. It's like, Papa, what do you think? Daddy, what do you think? So let him lead you. Okay? That's the story today. The word of God is the same forever. Old Testament, New Testament. We have established that. The Father, the Son, the Spirit speak the same word. You will never hear God. God the Father say one thing and Jesus say another and the Holy Spirit. No, no, no. It's the same. It's the same. And that we can find in John chapter, let me, let's do 12, 49 first. John 12, 49. This is Jesus speaking. For I have not spoken on my own authority. But the Father who sent me gave me a command. If you love me, obey my commandments. You are getting it. The Father who sent me, that means his word, gave me a command. What I should say and what I should speak. Remember, Jesus is the word of God that was released in the form of a human being on earth. So, Jesus hears the Father. He never does anything that he didn't hear the Father say. And then, he says in chapter 16, the same John, John 16 verse 13, 
1, 6, verse 1, 3. So now he says, when he goes away, he says, however. Okay, let, let's start from verse 12. Sorry about that. So John 16 from verse 12. John 16 from verse 12. Jesus says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Okay? So God doesn't stop speaking. This book, this, the same John says, no book can contain the things God wants to say. That's why we must allow him to lead, be led by the Spirit of God. No book in this world can contain everything God has to say. He speaks to us as a group, as a church, but it also, he also speaks to you as an individual. Which book is going to contain all that? Just let him lead you. Let him speak to you. Listen to him. If you love me, obey me. So Jesus is saying, I have too many things to, say, to talk to you about, but you can't Take it in all at once. And this was even before the Holy Spirit, you know, was permanent on the earth realm. And that's why he says, however, however, so even though you can't get it now, there is a solution. Don't, don't panic. However, calm down. However, when he, the spirit of truth, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus is the truth. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. The same God. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide. He will guide. He will guide you into all truth. Listen to this. For he will not speak on his own authority. What did Jesus just say in, in, chapter, in, in chapter 12? I don't speak of my own authority. 12, 12 verse 40, 49. I've not spoken on my own authority. Yeah? So the Holy Spirit, he says he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Verse 14. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare to you. So it's one in the other. Whatever Jesus speaks, that's what the Holy Spirit speaks. Verse 15 of John 16. All things that the Father has are mine. Everything the Father has are equally mine. Therefore, I said that he, the Holy Spirit, will take a word is mine and declare it to you. So they work together. Don't ever, you know, the Spirit of God is God himself. Just, you know, know it. Ask for the revelation. Seek God while he may be found. Don't allow religion and tradition and whatever distract you seek the lord focus on him he's right there in front of you okay when we know these things when we understand that the father the son the spirit speak the same word that's when freedom starts that's when we start to walk in freedom that's when we start to have an understanding of the things of God because his ways are higher than your ways. His thoughts are not like your thought. Once we understand that our changing circumstances don't change the eternal word of God, then we start to walk in freedom. Your circumstance does not determine the, the solution. God has already determined the solution. You are just walking through it. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because he is with me. This is when we start to allow the Spirit of God to lead us rather than being led 
by our feeble and fickle thoughts and circumstances because those, those ones are bound to change. We live in a fallen and broken world. So the things around us are bound to change. But God's word concerning you cannot, will not change. I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Let me just lead you. All right. Let's go back to Galatians that we read. Galatians chapter 5. I hope you're writing it down. You need to be fed and you need to take away. There is plenty, plenty to eat and to take away. Eat and take away. Don't be selfish now. All right. (laughs) Galatians 5. Verse 1, stand fast therefore. So we've done the introduction. Now you know that the word of God is a solid rock. You know that the word of God is the same in Old Testament and the same in the New Testament. You know that you can depend on the word of God. His word is solid, unchanging. And that's why he says, stand fast therefore. In the liberty, now that you know freedom, stand in that freedom by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again. You walked out once, don't go back in. Don't be entangled. You were entangled once. Jesus has liberated you. You are now free. Don't go back. And be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Where you came from was bondage. That was Egypt. Now you are free. Walk in that freedom. Stand fast in that freedom. Be firm in your resolution to serve God. To follow Jesus. How does it pay to be free one day and be bound again the next day? Just just think about it. Just because your circumstances change doesn't mean your mindset must change. No, your mindset must be steady. You are steady in your mindset. You've made up your mind. You are not shifting because it's not about you. Somebody else has already done it and settled it. We live in a fallen and broken world. Don't, don't, don't rely on it. Okay. If you keep shaking and shifting according to circumstance, that means your mind, your heart, (laughs) the word of truth has not yet settled in your heart. The word of truth, which is the word of love, must sit, must must have a position, must have a throne. Marco (laughs) Sarata. The word of truth, which is the word of love. We just heard that Jesus is the truth, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. And Jesus died for you because he loved you. He loved you. He loved you when you didn't even know him. He brought you out of bondage. If you keep going back to bondage, depending on your physical circumstance, that means that word of truth, that word of love has not found a throne in your heart yet. The word must sit, must must really take ownership. Sit on the throne. Let Jesus have a throne in your life. Let him be enthroned in your life. Let him be enthroned in your thoughts. Let him be enthroned in all the affairs of your life. He is with you. He goes before you and he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. That is his word. That is his promise. Unchanging. 
So you should not be changing due to circumstance. Christianity must not be a mental thing. If Christianity is still a mental and religious duty that is in your head, then you haven't found this truth yet. The truth must sit in your heart. That's why Jesus says, if you love me, you don't love here in the head, you love with your heart. If you love me, it's about love, nothing else. It's about love. Christianity is a love affair. Let Jesus take you on a rendezvous. I know they call it date these days. I just like to call it rendezvous. Go on a rendezvous with Jesus. You choose the place. Where is that place? Your heart, baby. Your heart. And he will send you an invitation. And he will confirm the time. When he comes, you will miss it. Trust me. But you must choose the place. Let, let's build a throne in your heart for Jesus. Let him take over. That's when you walk in freedom. That's when it's not about do this and do that and do that. It's just love, 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 love. One command. I don't know where you are, but start saying to yourself, I am free. I am free. I am liberated. Jesus has set me free. Paul is saying to the Galatians, stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made you free. Jesus has made you free. Stand in that freedom. Declare out loud to yourself, I am free. I am not a slave to religion and unbelief. I am free because I am a child of God. Jesus lives in me. That's the beginning of my liberty. The word of God frees me from mental bondage. I am free. Because I choose to belong. <laughs> I choose to belong in my father's house. In my father's house, I am free. Because everything I need, he has put it there for me. If you love me, keep my commandment. His commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart. With all your strength, with all that he has given in, 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 in your whole system. And love your neighbor as yourself. So love God, love the next person, love yourself. That's all God is asking you to do. When you walk like that, there's, you know, there's no law that, that can beat that. So you can truly declare, declare, I am free. Freedom comes from the love of God, not by rituals, not by, by, by religious rituals. Freedom comes from the love of God. Build a throne. Let Jesus be enthroned in your heart. Let his spirit guide you. If you perform religious rituals, Christ will profit you nothing. Okay, now you think Victoria is talking. Let's go back to Galatians chapter 5 verse 2. If you think Christianity is ritual, read this. Galatians 5 verse 2. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. Why is he saying this? 
the new converts. Remember, he was the apostle to the Gentiles. He was, he was a Jew sent to preach the good news to the Gentiles. And then some Jews will come and say, you know what? We are God's people. You know that. And they say, yeah. God gave us a commandment. We must all be circumcised. And they are like, okay. And then some of them will go and get circumcised. When Paul heard it, he's like, what? who bewitched you? Who bewitched? Is that? what you were taught is that is that the good news that i brought to you rituals religious rituals if you go and get circumcised then what are we preaching christ for then you have to live by the law not by the grace we are preaching if you become circumcised Christ will profit you nothing. Christianity is not a ritual. It's not a religion. Open your heart and receive the truth. Receive love and walk in love. If you, if you want to do law, then do law. Then don't call it Christianity. Jesus didn't die so that we go and live under the law. His death meant freedom to you. You didn't have to pay the price. He paid it. By walking under the law, you are trying to pay the price. And you can never do it. Others have never been able to do it till today. Who, who, who are you that you think you can do it now? No one has ever been able to do it. That's why God came and died himself. Okay, let's just read through verse 1 to 6. I'll just read it through so that you, 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 you see how it flows. So you stand fast in the liberty which Christ has made you free. Don't go and get entangled again with a yoke of bondage. That's past. That was the old person. When you accept Jesus, when you come into the family of God, you are no longer that old person. You are a completely new creature. Read John chapter 3, when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. You, you are born again. You are a different personality. Okay. The outward you know, covering here might look the same. But Christianity is from inside out. Verse 2. Indeed, I, Paul, said to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. So just leave Christ out of it. Christianity comes from the word Christ. So if you want to, to do the law, then leave Christ out of it. Then it's not Christianity. You are just doing your thing. You are not being led by the Spirit. Verse 3. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. If you want to keep one law, then just go ahead and keep the rest. And come back and tell me how you managed. I can already tell you that you have failed. Not you will fail, you have already failed. That's why Jesus came. To free you from that bondage. To give you a pass mark before you even started. Your success is guaranteed in Christ. Otherwise you are struggling for nothing. You have already failed. Read the Gospel of John. Those who believe in him are saved. Those who don't believe in him have already been condemned. It's a gift. Take it or leave it. That's, that's why it's so simple. It's a gift. You don't need to work for a gift. 
you receive it or you leave it alone. Verse 4. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt, you who attempt, you can only attempt it. You can never make it. You who attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. That's what I'm saying. Before you even try, I can tell you, you have already failed. That's the beauty of the gift of salvation. It's a gift. Those who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. Verse 5. For we, through the Spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. You agree, you step in, and then you start to walk in the righteousness of God. He paid the price. It belongs to him. You are just enjoying it. Verse 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. It's a spiritual matter, not a physical matter. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. But, 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 but faith working through love. You see, without love, your faith won't grow. You won't understand what you are doing. That's why you keep trying and push and then you're tired and you you're like oh this christianity you push no because you're not walking in love it is love that that helps your faith to grow because now you're not trying to work things out you're not trying to justify yourself by law you're just agreeing with god allowing him to lead you And then you start to see things happen. And then you're like, wow, wow. And then those little smiles start to come. Wow. Oh, Jesus, I didn't see that coming. Uh Aha. Because he's leading you. And when you see that he can do that, and you see that he can do that, what happens? Your faith grows automatically. Because now you are letting him be God. And you are just his baby. So you enjoy the fruit of the price that he paid. When you walk with him, you start to see the manifestation of goodness in your life. And that helps your faith to be stronger. If you don't do that, you will just be struggling. And you will lose faith. That's why people say, oh, I was a Christian. No, you were not. Christianity means being led by Christ. Allowing Christ to be the head. The eye. The eyes are in the head. You are the body. And so if if the head is not leading you, how can you see where you are going? If you fell, that means you never allowed him to lead you. Because I've said it already. The success is already sure with him, in him. All right. I'm going to say this again. Our righteousness is by faith. Righteousness by faith. So you agree with him. He leads you in those parts of righteousness. Our faith can only be activated by love. Our righteousness is by faith. So you agree with Jesus and you are automatically made righteous. And our faith can only be activated. 
activated by love. When you love him, you agree with him. He leads you and you start to see those signs. And those things, you know, cause you, oh yeah, this is true, this is true. Otherwise, you don't know. All right. There is no way we can obey God intellectually. <laughs> it, it doesn't work. You can't. It's by faith. And, and that faith is activated by love. Jesus died because of love. That it, that's the whole story. For God so loved the world that he gave. So everything you receive from God, like any child receives things from the daddy, it's because the daddy loves you. The, daddy, the daddies that don't love their children, you hear stories, oh, they beat you, they throw you out, they kick you, they lock you up. Yeah, that's the difference between a good daddy and a bad daddy. So, intelligence won't teach you about God. Your heart leads you to God. Okay? We must walk in His love then we would allow ourselves to be led by him. When you, when you walk, when you agree with his love and you walk in his love, then you, you trust him. You know he can never lead you astray. That's when you allow yourself to be led by him because you trust him completely, because you love him. And as we see the manifestation of his will and his plan in our lives, our faith becomes stronger and stronger. Or we grow deeper in faith, however you want to understand that. We grow deeper. As we grow deeper in faith, we also grow deeper in love. It works together. Let's jump to John chapter 14 again. Just one verse. Verse 21. John 14, 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. Simple obedience. You have my commandment, you keep them. That shows that you love me. And listen to this. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. Remember, he was the son on earth teaching us how to relate to the father. He who loves me will automatically be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. You see? That's what I'm talking about. When you walk with Jesus, th then you start to see the manifestation. Then things start to shift. Those broken and falling, fallen things start to get molded. You start to see a difference in your life. So it's love, obeying commandments, and then manifestation. If you love me, you will obey me. And because you love me, you acknowledge the price I paid. My father loves you automatically because you are in me. You see, you and I can't go to the Holy Father on our own. We need to hide ourselves in the Holy Son, the one that paid the price. And once you do that, Jesus says, I will make myself known to you. I will manifest myself. That's how you know God, by faith walking in his love and his righteousness. Okay, it's a bit up and down, jump back and forth. So let's go back to Galatians. But you need to see it. That's why I'm, I, I, the notebook, I had to remind, I know for some times I've not said it. At the beginning I used to say, you need your notebook and pen. You know, all this back and forth, you will never remember. So Galatians 5, now verse 7. Paul is saying, 
you ran well, you started well. The, the, this, this, this journey started well. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? You see what Jesus just said in John? To Paul, he's saying that. What, what stopped you? Who hindered you from obeying the truth? You can only run well by obeying this truth, by walking with Jesus, by allowing him to lead you. Do not let anyone hinder you from obeying the truth. I don't care who they are. These days, we have the Bible. In all olden days, you know, we didn't have the, the Bible for ourselves. To listen to what the word is saying, go back and read it. That's why I said write it down. Go back and study it on your own. Don't let anybody tell you what is not written here. You have the choice. Don't let anyone hinder you. Paul is saying you ran well. That means you started well. Who hindered you? What stopped you? Who stopped you from obeying the truth? Verse 8. This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. God didn't put you in that line. Because the gift of God is free. And he says, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. If you just allow this liar, this person that is hindering you to step in a little bit, the whole lump, your whole life is messed up again. So you keep going back to bondage. That's why it is your choice. And that's why it is love in the heart, not here. Don't go and sit down and reason to, with the devil. Listen, what is the spirit of truth saying to you? Let the eyes of your heart be enlightened. Find out the truth. It's up to you. But don't have the truth today and then, you know, one, one foot in the world, one foot in the Lord, one foot in the world. One, what, what kind of life is that? Don't allow these deceivers into your life. A little, a little, just a little bit. When that dirt comes in, it makes everything dirty. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. You cannot, you cannot take yeast and put in, in, you want to bake bread or cake. Then you take yeast and then you just mix with one side of the flour. And then you think it will not mix with the rest of the flour that you want to use and bake the cake or bread. Of course, you, when you mix it in a little part, it mixes with the whole. When you allow in these lies, it destroys your whole life. Because then you are not, you are, you are neither here nor there. Okay. Verse 10. I have confidence in you. So Paul is saying, I'm just saying this. I'm not writing you off. I have confidence. You heard the truth once. You started running this race well. I have confidence in you. In the Lord, because of God, I, I want to believe the best for you and about you. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind. But he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. Did you think something like that was in the Bible? I don't think you, you see, in, in, in the olden days when, let me read it again so that in case you didn't catch it. Verse 10, I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind. You are, your mind has been made up. But that person that wants to hinder you, that person who troubles you shall bear his judgment, 
whoever he is. That person will have to carry the punishment of his spirit of deception and troubling and, and hindering. In the olden days, I was going to say, when everybody, you know, they have the Bible, and then the priest, the pastor, you know, minister will stand and preach and, and preach on something like this. And then people will say, oh, the pastor is talking about me. If you think a word is talking to you, then do what Isaiah 55 said. Return to the Lord. Nobody's talking about you. It's the word of God that is hitting you like a hammer. And that is why those witches and witches of old will dance in the dark during the night. And then on Sunday morning, they are the ones who will sit in the front rows and, and try to put cast spells on the preacher so that they don't preach words like this to them. People who don't like to hear words like this, you better think again. Stop being the, the, uh, the, the, advo uh, uh, the satanic agent. If you don't choose Christ, then don't hinder other people. And you, you know, it's written there. You will bear the punishment. You bear the judgment. So just leave it and so that it will be easier. Don't go out of your way to hinder others. If you don't want to eat, then leave others to eat. That's how pastors stopped preaching things like this. Oh, I don't want to offend somebody. No, I want to offend you. And I hope it will help you. Because it's not my word. It's right there. Read it for yourself. Don't trouble those who are seeking God. Don't mock something you don't understand. Go and find out the truth for yourself. Otherwise, you're just heaping punishment on yourself. No pastor is preaching against you. It's the word of God. It's a hammer, it's a sword, a double-edged sword. However you want it, that's how it comes to you. You need to know the truth. Don't hinder the truth. That's what he's saying. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Don't let anyone hinder you from obeying the truth and you be, be, be advised today. Stop hindering people from obeying the truth because it's not good for you. So you see, it's two ways. God, God lets us know it so that you can make up your mind. Okay. A word is enough for the wise. Have no other mind. Be steadfast. Be, be steadfast. Be resolute in your decision and your desire to pursue Jesus, to follow Jesus, to seek him. The world has never had anything good to offer and it will never have. What, what, what is there has always been. And it didn't help anyone. That's why Jesus came to help. If you don't want him, just leave it alone. Let the punishment be, you know, considerable if, if it is. The person that troubles you, the person that tries to hinder you, will only have him or herself to blame. So you better start advising them. And that's what I'm doing now. They will bear their own judgment, whoever they are. So refrain, just refrain. Stop doing it. And those who want to hear the word, stop listening everywhere. Stay focused. 
Jesus says, I am before you. So look at him in front of you. Stop looking here and there. He's got you. Front, back, up, down, everywhere. And he is everything you need. And that's why this is offensive. <laughs> this, that's why this is offensive. Because people want to do their own thing. But God says, let me lead you. Be led by the Spirit. Let's look at verse 11. Galatians 5, I'm talking about. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. You see, that's what I'm saying. The cross is offensive. The, the, the truth of the gospel is offensive to those whose hearts are hardened. Normally, the word should come like water to refresh you. You should be, if you were like dry sponge and, 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 and you were put in water, you soak it up. But for those who don't want, they are, they are hard. So when, when the word comes, it hits them and they get offended. But if you are receptive, like that sponge, you are dry. When the word comes, you say, oh, how refreshing. You see? So the word, to the one that is walking right, is refreshing. But the same word to the one that is not walking right is a hammer. It's offensive. That's what he's saying there. If I still preach circumcision, if I'm talking about obeying the law, why am I being persecuted then? Why, why is there an offense if I'm saying the same thing as you want to hear? No, I'm not. If it's like that, then the offense of the cross has ceased. The cross needs to be offensive. Why? Because whoever hangs on the tree is cursed. So the Jewish people could not understand why a cursed thing should bring redemption, should bring salvation, because they were thinking in their heads. Be led by the Spirit. Don't let your mind just rest. That's why they got offended. When they, they asked Jesus, who are you? He says, I'm, I'm, I'm the child of God. I'll die. I'll come back in three days. They tear their clothes. How can you <laughs> say you are God? It's offensive because they didn't want to receive him. Okay. So let, let us just, you know, let, 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 in case for those who don't know, I know a lot of you know. Whoever hangs on a tree is cursed. Okay, that's correct. Let's go to Deuteronomy. We were there today already. Let's go back there. Deuteronomy, this time, verse, uh, chapter 21, and verse 22 and 23. Deuteronomy 21, 22 and 23. It says, if a man has committed a sin deserving of death, and he is put to death, and you hang him on a tree, yeah? his body shall not remain overnight on the tree, but you shall surely bury him. See, God is so merciful. But you shall surely bury him that day, so that you do not defile the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. It's a gift. Everything you have is a gift. For he who is hanged is accursed of God. You see, that's why Jesus had to come and take the curse. He became the curse so that you can be free. So if you are still doing religion, you won't get it. You will only just see the person hanging on the tree. You won't understand what God is working out. 
He had to become the curse so that you can be free. He is God. He just took your curse away. That's why you know he is God. He died and three days he came back. Glorious as before. Catch him if you can. <laughs> Let him lead you. Galatians 3 verse 13. We were just reading Galatians 5. Now I'm, I'm saying Galatians 3. So flip backwards. 3 verse 13. 1, 3. Chapter 3 verse 1, 3. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. The law is a curse. You can't keep it. It only makes you sin more. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. You see? So you have the, ex the, the same word in the Old and the New Testament. Don't let people deceive you. Don't let people hinder you from the truth that is clearly written, that you can find out for yourself. Okay. God's ways are different from our ways. That's why it looked so terrible for Jesus to hang there and the Jewish people who were thinking, you know, with their mind, thought, oh, he called himself God. See, now he's cursed. No, he just hung there to take away your curse. God's ways are higher than your ways. His thoughts are different from you. You must follow him to find out. You can only know in his presence. He's the one who is going to reveal to you. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of revelation, the spirit of truth. That's how you know the truth about God, by his spirit. His spirit tells you who he is, otherwise you don't know. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus, we just read in, in, in John. So that you know that it is the same God we are talking about. God's ways are upside down and inside out. Don't try to figure it out. It will not work. Just let him lead. Jesus fulfilled the law. That's why he had to take it upon himself. Let us go back to Galatians and read. Galatians chapter... Where am I? Let me just read that um, Galatians 3 verse, I just read 13, let's read 14. So Jesus became the cause for us, okay? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through Faith, the promise of the Spirit through faith. You believe it, you receive it. You don't wait to receive it before you believe. The evidence is there. Follow me. Let me lead you. So Jesus had to hang on that tree, become a curse for us, so that the blessing that God promised will now be ours. Otherwise, we'll have the curse. That's why it's a choice. Choose one. The curse of the law or the blessing that comes through the cross. That's why the cross is offensive. If you just want to think about, you know, someone hanging on the tree, you lose out. That is the fulfillment of the law so that you can receive freedom. So that you can receive the blessing 
that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. The Jewish people had the blessing of Abraham automatically. But now we are being, we Gentiles, the non-Jews, are being called into the same blessing, the same blessing. Old Testament, New Testament, all fulfilled in Christ. So we share the same blessing, the same inheritance. And that's why we must receive it by the Spirit, through faith. I said earlier that our faith can only be activated by love. We agree and we receive and then we walk in the righteousness that Jesus paid for. All right. So Jesus fulfilled the law. So he took it upon himself and released freedom to us. Or release us into freedom. So you have, he, he gave it to you. It's up to you to receive or say no thanks. All right, let's go back to chapter 5, Galatians. Also verse 14. Uh, oh, bear with me. Where did I stop? I stopped in verse 11. I'll just read through, okay? Verse 12 down. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. I can't emphasize it even more. Paul is saying it, and that's the truth. Serve each other through love. Let love be your watchword. Don't be selfish. Don't use your liberty for your fleshy desires. Verse 14. For all, that's uh, verse 14, chapter 5, Galatians. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I said that earlier. That's, that's all that you need. The only commandment you need to, 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 to act on. Love. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. So act in love, live in love, and everything is good. All right. Verse 16, where we started today. So when you walk in love, for me it's a therefore. When, if the law is, is fulfilled in love, okay, then we must walk in the Spirit. We must walk in this love of God and be led by the Spirit. So verse 16 says, I say then, because of all this that we've been discussing, Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you do it God's way, then it's good. Let him lead. For the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. If you listen to the flesh, you will go wrong every time. That's why I say, don't let one foot be here. And what Today you are here, tomorrow you are there. Hold on to Jesus. Behold the Lamb, the one that takes away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb. Verse 17. For the, okay, we read that. For the flesh lost against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. They are always in contention. Verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The law has been fulfilled in love. You're not thinking, oh, I don't want to kill, I don't want to steal, I don't want to fornicate, I don't want... No. When you walk in love, all those things are wrapped up and cast out. You just walk in love. Simple. You don't have to bother. You don't live under any law. 
Just walk by love, in love. So, and, and it tells us all the works of the flesh that are evident, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. That means the list goes on and on. You don't, you don't even want to know. Just walk in love. You don't want to know about all these things. It's none of your business. And Paul says, all this I told you beforehand. That those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Because you are just doing your own thing. It has nothing to do with God. Jesus has paid the price, fulfilled the law. And you still want to go back then. So you'll be one day here, one day here, just trying to make it happen. Paul says, you will not inherit the kingdom. The whole point is for us to go back to daddy's house. That's the whole point. We left daddy's house when we disobeyed. Going back to Genesis, Adam and Eve. The covering, the protection, the, the, the provision, all that was gone. And Jesus came and said, you know what? I'm, recon I'm reconciling you back. Let's go back home. That's all Jesus came for. To take us back to the kingdom of God. Where there's peace, where there's love, where there's all kinds of supply. Everything you need. In him you have everything. So if you choose to do law and walk in all these selfish things, then you will not inherit. It's an inheritance. It's a gift. We just read it earlier. You won't inherit the kingdom of God. And it says a but in verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So when you walk in love, these things come automatically. And that's why it says against such things, there's no law. There is no law. I don't have to keep any law. When I walk in love. And those who are Christ. Have crucified the flesh. With its passions and desires. Let it die. Start to enjoy life. Let the flesh die. Walk in the spirit. And start to enjoy life. Verse 25. If we live in the spirit. Let us also walk in the spirit. If you have chosen. To come back home. Inherit the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven. Then. Let the one who knows the way back home lead you. Yet, let us not become conceited. Don't think, oh, I've got it all. No, no, that would be pride. That's why I say, bring your notebook, get fed, and take away. Others need to know what you know. Don't let what you know make you become proud. Don't be conceited. Don't become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. If you do that, then you're just going back to the old ways. There's no envy in love. Love is free. You've been loved free of charge, so you can love others free of charge as well. Amen? Amen. I think we have it now. So the point is, 
concluding the choice is ours You have to ask yourself, do I choose to live in the spirit and walk in the spirit? My answer is yes, I have chosen that. So if you have chosen the same, let us pray. Let us pray that we will not allow anything or anyone to hinder us from this truth that we've learned today. Let us pray. That our freedom and liberty that we have received, I said earlier, you should declare to yourself, I am free. That freedom that we have received should make us more loving and more kind and not make us conceited, make us proud. No. If you receive the love of God freely, then give the love of God away. If you receive freedom, then treat others the same way. Pardon others because God has pardoned you. Forgive others because God has forgiven you. By living and walking in the Spirit, or by being led by the Spirit, we will not allow unbelievers to hinder our walk. Okay? So you've made up your mind. By walking in the Spirit, we will not continue to deep in and deep out, deep in and deep out. Your walk is forward and upwards. Forward and upwards to the kingdom of heaven. Not one foot in the world and one foot in the spirit. Make up your mind. So, another prayer point. Let us pray for the strength to be and to remain steadfast. Stand on that rock. Stand on that truth. Walk in that love. The strength to remain steadfast. The word of truth that you've known today. Pray that it never ever leaves you. And nothing and no one should be able to steal it away from you. We have been granted the citizenship of heaven by the death and resurrection of Jesus. He died on that cross to, to bring back the blessing to us. So we are citizens of heaven. That's what the Bible says. You have been granted it. You have been given it. You've been made a child of God again by you believing. So let us no longer choose the citizenship of the fallen and broken world. Amen? Amen. So those are three main prayer points. Let us just take a moment, surrender your heart to God, and say, Holy Spirit, lead me. I choose to be led by you. I agree with the word of truth. I agree with what I've heard today, and I agree to be led. I receive the liberty and I pray for the strength to maintain this walk and not have a double mind today, here, tomorrow, there. And I will not let anyone talk me out of the freedom that I've received today. Because I've chosen to walk in love, I will focus on the God of love. Amen. Marco Sarata, in the name of Jesus, Sandara Mashe, Eskalama Sanctum, Zibaba Arigaroda Zakata, Kandiaribo, Marco Sarata. Pray, Spirit, pray, Mamabo Zakata. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, for choosing to lead us, for loving us so much, for wanting to lead us. Mamabo Zakata. Eskalama Sanctum, Ziba Bariga Roda Zakata, Chelelakai, Santaramashe, Santaramashe, Paro de Ge, Espera de Deasa, Eskalama Sanctum, Ziba Bariga Roda Zakata. Father, we thank you. Thank you that you love the world so much that you sent your only begotten Son. Lord Jesus, thank you that you came to redeem us and to show us the way back home to the Father. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, that you are still here, leading, guiding, teaching, 
counseling. You are just the best of the best. And we people don't even know you. And here you are, bringing us peace, revealing the Godhead to us, leading us in the path of righteousness, helping us to read the Bible and understand. Otherwise, we'll just read and, and we'll just see Jesus on the cross and we say he is cursed. No, he's not cursed. He took our curse upon himself and he released us into his blessing. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the word of today. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for the liberty that we have received today. And we choose to walk in that liberty. Thank you for forgiving us the sins of our ignorance uh, and, and allowing people to, to talk us out of your truth. Lord, forgive us. Help us to walk in the light that we have received today. Where there's light, there cannot be darkness. Receive glory. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well done, saints. Now it is communion. Let us do communion. Get your elements ready. All we need is to offer it to the Lord and the Spirit of God will release His power in these elements, these things made by human. You know, we, 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 we plant, we reap, and then we grind the flour and make bread out of it. May the Spirit of God comes upon it. And then before we know it, it's no more bread and wine, but the body and blood of Jesus. That's the mystery that people are missing. It's a mystery. You can't get that going to school. Allow Jesus to be enthroned in your heart and you will get it. And, and let your attitude always be that of gratitude. Thank God for loving you so much. Thank him that you are his divine choice. He chose you. He chose you. You are without reproach. He loves you. He loves us. Think about it. Why would somebody want to pay such a price? For, for, for what reason? It's because he loves you. So let us acknowledge the love of God and let us walk in that love and allow him to lead us. So Father, we thank you. Thank you for this bread. You gave human beings the seed. You give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. You gave human beings the seed and they planted and they harvested, and they had the brain to grind it and form bread out of it. All this is by your love, your grace, and mercy. So we say thank you, Father. And that's how Jesus, during the last supper he had with his disciples, he took the bread and gave you thanks. And Father, we just want to say thank you right now. He blessed the bread, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body. Because once Jesus gave thanks and praise to the Father, the Holy Spirit was already at work. And so he said, this is my body, which will be given up for you. And he gave them and they believed it. And they ate it. Jesus was still physically sitting there with them. But he said, this is my body, which will be given up for you. You see, don't apply your brain here. God works differently. They believed that that bread was the body of Christ. 
even though they didn't understand. They took it and they ate. Okay. When supper had ended, same way he took the cup. Give thanks to the Father. As we are doing now, Father, we thank you. Thank you for the fruit of the vine. Thank you that we can plant and harvest and squeeze the vine and bring the juice from it. We thank you that this is your provision. And the same way Jesus said, this is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting sacrifice. This covenant, once it's made, it seals everything. This is my blood, which will be shed for you, my disciples, and for all men who will believe. And he said, do this in memory of me. And that's what we are doing right now. Lord Jesus, we remember you and we say thank you. Thank you that you paid the price. Thank you that you hung on that cross on my behalf. I should have been the one hanging there. But you hung there for me. So I say thank you. And thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, for making this truth, this mysteries known to us, for revealing these mysteries in our hearts. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. So Lord, as we receive you, we ask that your presence in us, in these mortal bodies, that your presence in us would burst and cancel everything that this fallen and broken world has caused to manifest in us. Every form of sickness, we come against them in Jesus' name. We curse the spirit of infirmity right now. Mama Bozakata. We speak life to everything that is dead and broken. We speak resurrection life. We say, Lord Jesus, you did not die for nothing. You died, you went to hell, just ransacked hell, took everything Satan stole. And you rose up victorious. In you, because of you, we are victorious. Over sickness, over pain, over lack, over the torment that comes from the pit of hell. We set ourselves free right now. And we declare loud and clear to the north, south, east and west. We are free in Christ Jesus. Free of sickness free of double-mindedness, free to serve the Lord, free to love God and his people. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for doing this for us. We remember all that you had to go through for us, and we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The body of Christ. We love you, Lord. And we say thank you. Thank you for your blood. We cannot even finish saying all the things that the blood of Jesus can do. You are endless. And the things you can do in our lives are endless. And so we say thank you. The blood of Jesus. Amen.
keep thanking him in your heart. Attitude of gratitude. Bless him. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. He alone is holy. He alone is worthy. And we give him all the praise and all the honor and the adoration. Father, we thank you. We come to you by the power of your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And we say thank you for all that you planned ahead of us. And even more, thank you for allowing us to know these things and to start to walk in them. For some, it might be an offense, <laughs> but for us, it's a blessing so we can smile. Thank you, Jesus. We receive this inheritance. We receive the blessing. We curse the curse. And we say, depart from us. We reject you. We resist you. We choose to walk in love by faith and righteousness and holiness. So help us, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us your divine nature, your superior nature. Thank you for your love. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Since I'm sure your plates were loaded today and you ate and you ate and you ate and you have another loaded, other loaded plates to take away, okay? The people around you need this word. So share, 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 share. Stop selling fish. Don't be selfish. <laughs> share the word. Share it on Facebook. Share it on YouTube. Share it with word of mouth. Just share. Let other people become partakers of the good news, of this freedom, of this divinity. How can... You see, if the spirit of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in us, how can you still be normal? No, I'm not normal according to the world. I'm normal according to heaven. So the world will have a hard time understanding me. And that is okay. That's perfectly okay. If you want to understand me, come, let's go up here. Let's go up. We are citizens of heaven, okay? We are not citizens in this fallen and broken world. Let's change our mindset, okay? Jesus didn't die so that we can live a broken life. No, his body was broken so that yours might be made whole. So everything that was broken in you declare, I am made whole today in Jesus' name. Amen? All right. So give, 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 give. God is a giver and you should give. Give and it shall be given to you. Press down, shaken together, running over. Shall God cause men? You don't know how he's coming. You just do what your heart tells you. Nobody's forcing you to give what you don't want. Let it be. Because when it is from your heart, then you're speaking the language of heaven. Then God, because God sees the heart. Is really not by force. Remember the woman with the might, the, the widow. She didn't give much, but Jesus said she gave more than the ones that were throwing in millions. It's a heart. It's, the, it's love. I can't say it any other way. So God gives. For God to love the world that he gave. If you love, give. Anyhow you can give. Last week, we talked about rebuilding the temple or building the altar. If we are in God's house, if we are in our daddy's house, he put Adam and Eve in the garden and he said, tend it. You have to 
Jesus said as a 12 year old, don't you know I have to go about my daddy's business? So what is your daddy's business that you are going about? It's a question you need to answer. Are you helping, encouraging in any shape or form? Or are you choosing to be the one that is hindering? Okay? It's a choice. So do what the Holy Spirit leads you to do. All right. During the week, we still have more to eat where this came from. So come and join us for dinner. Tuesdays, the youth service, 6 p.m. UK time. 30 minutes, 6 to 6.30. Then 7 o'clock for the whole family, 7 to 8. That's Tuesday, that's Wednesday, that's Friday. Three days a week, Bible study, one hour each. 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. UK time. If you are outside of UK, set your clock accordingly. And then on Thursday night, 9 p.m., we have the MLJ prayer mantle. It's a prayer altar. It's a place of petition and supplication. Make your prayers known to God. Make your petition known to God. Bring him, you know, everything that is on your heart. Pour it out to him. He knows it. But he wants you to talk to him about them. He wants a relationship and not religion. Okay. Friday, 10 p.m. Since it is weekend, Friday night our church night. So we have Bible study by 7 p.m. Then by 10 p.m. When we finish by 8, two hours later, we have the fire hour of prayer. This is where you just come. You are already gold, but daddy wants to make you a purer kind of gold. So you come and just soak in his presence. You speak in tongues, you build yourself up. Those who speak in other tongues edify themselves. So you come here after the whole week of working to be re-energized. So after one hour, you go back with muzzles popping up like Popeye. You become a Popeye in the spirit. I know some of you don't know who Popeye is. Anyway, so that's what you do. (laughs) That's what you do on Friday night. You come and get pumped up, spiritual muzzles. And then you're like, what, what happened? Was I tired? No, now I'm ready to fire on. Fire hour of prayer. All right, I'll let you go. I know some of you are looking at the time. Stop looking at the time. Don't live in the flesh, live in the spirit. But I'll let you go. And I bless you and I love you. But remember, Jesus loved you and died for you. He paid the price. There's nothing, there's no other God. There's no other helper, no other savior, no other redeemer. And I said at the beginning, if you think there is, please go and find out and come back and tell me. I'll be willing to listen. Okay? You have the freedom. I bless you. I declare over you that the blood of Jesus is your refuge. You are protected under his blood. The light of the Holy Spirit is your shield. Because where there's light, there cannot be darkness. That darkness cannot penetrate. And the love of the Father is a permanent firewall of protection around you. Nothing can penetrate. When those arrows come, they just burn in that fire. And you are protected. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And may his perpetual light continually shine upon you. And may he give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you. I love you. Jesus loves you more. Bye for today. God bless. Bye-bye.